Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and today we are finally going to be talking about the newest album from Judas Priest called Firepower. You know, I don't think I've ever mentioned my opinion on Judas Priest in any of my reviews before now. And for a band that's considered one of the foundational groups in the creation of heavy metal, that kind of surprises even me that I haven't really weighed in on them. Although, if I'm being very honest, I can't really say my opinion is all that controversial this time. Even despite the fact that I'm not really the biggest fan of straightforward thrash metal, revisiting the entire Judas Priest discography before this review reminded me why I still really like these guys. Now, granted, I'm one of those fans who will call out Stained Class as his favorite record from Judas Priest and will admit that he's not quite as crazy about their synth-infused mainstream breakthrough in the 80s in comparison with their late 70s work, although Painkiller was a pretty damn great return to form. But that's more because some of the glitzier 1980s production choices haven't quite aged as well, especially around the drums and the vocals. Less about some pretty great compositions themselves that I'm sure sound great live to this day. And as for the 90s and 2000s record, Records. Look, there are very few, if any, bands that were consistent 20 or 30 years in, especially given the massive upheavals in metal around that time. And it's not like Judas Priest always had the most consistent discography, even in their glory years. Let's be honest there, it's true. So fast forward to 2014, and despite having lost one of their founding guitarists, K.K. Downing, Judas Priest releases Redeemer of Souls. And for many, it's cited as a big return to form, thanks to a welcome shot of energy from the newcoming guitarist Richie Faulkner and Rob Halford remaining a powerhouse in front of the microphone. Now, granted, Judas Priest records have felt increasingly overlong in recent years, and that project unfortunately was no exception, but Firepower looked to be calling back more to the past four years later, slimming down to under an hour and even bringing on their old producer Tom Alam in order to assist, along with Andy Sneep to add some modern touches, which Okay, that could be interesting. And like when I was covered Deep Purple's Infinite last year, I was preparing myself for this to be Judas Priest's last record. Glenn Tipton had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and he couldn't tour anymore. And as much as Rob Halford could still really deliver behind the microphone, the band's debut album came out in 1974, 44 years ago. So all right, what do we get on Firepower? Well, honestly, this review might wind up being pretty short because yes, all the buzz is very much true. Judas Priest's Firepower is easily the band's best record since Painkiller, and it very much got there by simply adhering to the hard melodic riffing, the terrific solos, and the knack for big hooks that broke them decades ago. Now, would I put it among their best work or call this a great album? Honestly, probably not. I'm not sure Firepower would be among my top three or even top five Judas Priest records, or represents anything more than a very serviceable slice of accessible thrash-leaning heavy metal that even to casual Judas Priest fans, they'll feel familiar, but at the same time, if you're an easy sell for that sound, and I think deep down I am, firepower, it'll definitely satisfy. This was a lot of fun. And the place we're going to start off with is the instrumentation and production, where I'll admit a little bit of concern going into this album about bringing back Tom Alum. Yes, I know he was one of their main producers during their 80s run, but given that, again, I wasn't really crazy about that era, I was worried about elements like the vocal pickup or an over-reliance and synthesizers away from the rips that kind of characterize that run that I didn't want to see show up here. Now, thankfully, not really the case. There are a few vocal layering choices that are questionable, like on the Bridge of Lone Wolf sound a little oily there. And yes, songs like Spectre and Never the Heroes do feature some wiry synth accents that open up the songs, but they're not overly obtrusive, and in the latter case, at least one of my favorite songs on the album. And I'm not letting Andy Sneap off the hook here either in terms of any concessions to modernity, but really there isn't, mostly through a commitment to more consistent dynamics in the guitar layering, letting the melodies push off the rhythm guitar work really quite well, it sounds very modern and clean, and a willingness to let Judas Priest play some songs with greater simmer and presence, maybe slow down a little bit, like the smoldering interlude midway through Evil Never Dies, or the misty melody lines ebbing through the more atmospheric segments of Spectre, or the straight out power ballad that ends the album Sea of Red. Now that said, there are a few moments that I felt were a tad choppy and a little undercooked. I wasn't really wild about how clipped the riffs sounded as they opened up Flamethrower, and for a band that's always had a fondness for their symphonic side, like on the Interlude Guardians or, again, Sea of Red, I was a little bit surprised that those symphonic elements weren't giving a little bit more weight or bombaster presence. Now, granted, it could be a choice to slim things down and call back to their glory years, but why then keep the record at nearly an hour long and not trim it down to just the tightest cuts? This could have been 10 minutes shorter, and that's 
that's a frustrating thing with Judas Priest records over the past couple of decades. They always feel like they run a tad bit longer than they really should for the amount of ideas they have. And while I wouldn't say that any song here is outright bad, not all these hooks are really distinctive enough to really earn the full hour. Some songs just kind of run together. But really, a lot of that is nitpicking surrounding a very strong core sound. And Judas Priest proved that over 40 years in, they still have a ton of potency in this record. Again, is a lot of fun. I love the surging high guitars on lightning strucks, the swaggering liquid tones behind Never the Heroes. And while it does feel a tad bit short, ironically, the hook on No Surrender, it's amazingly catchy as one of the more straightforward cuts on this album. And that's before we even get to the guitar solos, often traded off or even synchronized between Richie Faulkner and Glenn Tipton, with the big standouts coming on Trader's Gate, the title track, and the other catchy as hell song Rising from Ruins. And while Rob Halford can't quite hit the shrillest of high notes anymore, he's smart enough not to try that, instead relies a little bit more heavily on his lower register, maybe even a bit of multi-tracking, which keeps him just as much of a powerhouse presence without overselling these songs. And yet with tracks like Spectre and Evil Never Dies, he proves he still has that cackling presence and personality that remains so fiercely compelling. He's great behind the mic here yet again. Now what isn't all that compelling are a lot of the lyrics, and honestly I'm a little bit split on this because it's not like anybody comes to a Judas Priest record for the songwriting, or that any of this is outright bad or embarrassing, because it's not. A little bit silly, sure. Necromancer is quite literally describing what a necromancer would do, and it's a little bit underwhelming for a fantasy nerd like myself, and it's a similar case for Flamethrower and Lone Wolf, a little bit one-dimensional there. But you know what, if you include yourself into the right mindset, there are really some gems here. Lightning Crashes, for instance, is quite literally speaking from the point of view of the bolt of lightning itself incinerating one speaking against the higher powers, and I actually kind of like the moral ambiguity of the war-torn soldier on Never the Heroes. If anything, the larger complaint about some of the songwriting and lyrics here is that it can feel a tad bit conventional for Judas Priest, which means that I'm left wishing that they could have pushed a little bit harder beyond the details. I mean, I like the country reference on Evil Never Dies to The Devil Went Down to Georgia by Charlie Daniels, or also the implied stories behind Sea of Red and Traitor's Gate that left some subtext in clear, but you know what, they could have gone for more at this point in their career, why not? Granted, if they were looking to keep things more straightforward to call back to that past era, I get keeping it simple, but you know what, I still found myself wishing for a little bit more meat in order to really back up the riffs. But as a whole, I gotta be honest, I really like this. But hell, as a Judas Priest fan, an album like this is easy for me to like, especially given how long this band has been active and how much they call back to that earlier sound. Again, I wouldn't say it's among my top three or top five from the group, but it's easily the best thing they put out since Painkiller nearly 28 years ago, and I can certainly respect the level of talent on display to deliver this brand of metal while not sounding tired or succumbing to gimmicks. Maybe a little bit slower, but hey, the melodies are still good and the riffing is still tight as hell. So for me, light 7 out of 10, certainly a recommendation. But if you're new to Judas Priest, there is a wealth of other albums that I would check out first. This is more for the diehard fans. But if you're curious and looking for some thrash-leaning heavy metal that's a lot of fun, yeah, You'll enjoy this. Definitely worth a listen. Check this out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Yeah, I know, I'm pretty upbeat about this review, but hey, it's simple. When it works, it works. If you want to check it out, you want to buy the record, link's in the description below. And I got the poll up there for all you guys who want to tell me how wrong I am. Actually, I don't know. Judas Priest fans seem like they're pretty low-key. I think they can appreciate the score I gave it, especially with respect to the rest of the discography. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process or support this channel, link to my Patreon is right over there. Where three times a week we get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. More details right there. If you want to see the schedule, it's posted on my Instagram, link below. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.